And speaking of the custom materials, one of the things that you can do is find alternative materials, which we've been talking about this. I would I would encourage everyone to go to a website. It's G A B L O K dot B E, I believe. It's in another country. And just watch this video about how they're building these homes with alternative resources. Really, really cool. It's it's the the way they're building them is fascinating to me. They can like have it up in just a couple of days. Is it um it's 3D printed? It's, no, it's called like a gablock. And they come in like two packs or four packs or like and it's it's like link, it's like real life Lincoln logs. It's amazing. Anyway, well, we'll so it's kind of like the the prefabbed homes we, we talked about a little bit, but then you just kind of piece just, them together. Yeah, it's like Legos for this. Wow. Yeah, it's fascinating. So go there, check it out. I'll put it, I'll put something in the show notes about it. Uh, but this one is about the 3D printed developments. Uh, let me bring up the right article. Yeah, here. so we've covered there's there, you know, we, we covered it first when they were a thing in other countries to help third world countries kind of just get yeah. housing for people. We covered it when they tried one here, and then we've covered it that hey, it's a thing now, but now this article I believe covers like developments. Yep. And uh, look what we just said the word prefab and uh, Christina M. Smallhorn. Dude, she appears prefab. every time. Every time every time we mention the word tiny house what? or prefab. They, it's, she's like, already there. it's like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It is. Right. Don't don't say it three times. <laughs> Mike Elizabeth Rodell said, "Dude, metal studs were way cheaper than two by fours now." Mind blown. Well, they did go up thirty percent recently because we were talking about that on our show, and then the next week they went up. So um, wait, so Chris, I listen to metal music. I'm a metal stud. stud. Yeah. Chris Murray said there are three D printed home project in Rancho Mirage. Oh, you've got to go there and live stream it on our for our, for for the be more, dude. All right, I will. Uh, Christina Smallhorn said, I have a folding house that connects like Legos. It's called Boxable, B-O-X-A-B-L. What? Yeah. All right, so let me get into this 3D printed house. Matt, if you could show people what these things look like. Uh, barely a month ago, 3D printed house was listed for sale to the public for the first time in the U.S. Now, a small 3D printed community in Texas is following suit. Uh, there's another larger one uh, in, in California, which may be the one they're referencing. In other words, 3D printed real estate is taking off in a big way. Uh, Icon is a pioneer in the 3D printed homes in the U.S., just completed their homes in East Austin, Texas, in a partnership with Kansas City-based developer Three Strands. Uh, the two to four bedroom homes are now on the market, starting in the $400,000 range. Wow. I wonder how much it costs to build by comparison and if the demand for them will be the same. Now, last week we showed a picture of them and we said that it looked like, um, did we say it looked like icing and then someone took one of those combs and kind of ran through the icing so you could see these? Uh, yeah, one of the like five prong combs to the yeah. side of it, yeah. Yeah, Matt, bring up that picture. It's in the middle of the article if you can so that people could see. I believe this is like maybe part of the home or garage. No, the other picture. Sorry. Uh, oh, that is interesting. That's what the development looks like. These little uh, boxes go down to the up, up, up right there. All right. You see? Yeah, this? yeah. there you go. You can see it. So it looks like um, someone stacked a whole bunch of layers of icing together. And we talked about how maybe making those smoother would be uh, advantageous. But that's what they look like on the inside, too. Yeah. Can uh, you, though? And then can you 3D print stairs and like where the wood is, where it's showing the wood? Because that one looks like it just has a chunk of it 3D printed. Right. A year ago, Icon printed seven one-story, 400-square-foot homes in Austin in collaboration with uh, Mobile Loves and Fishes. Mobile Loves and Fishes. Uh, in Austin, not-for-profit. Uh, the, the homes are part of a community for the homeless. So, yeah, we talked about that, how they were testing it for the homeless. Right. We talked about how they were testing it in other countries and how if materials costs keep going up, then this may be a great alternative. Uh, they're basically made out of concrete, which it may just escalate the price of concrete. So, I mean, that, right, that, that so that's my question is because I does the article cover, I, I think it says they can print 41% of the home or something like that. And then the rest of it has to be traditional materials. Yeah, it's not a full, let's see, 3D printing process eliminates 99% of the construction waste and is 30 to 40% cheaper than a traditional construction. Right, but then are they going to just still uh, sell it for market value and then take the 30, for 30 to 40% difference? Or are they going to sell it for that much less and take it? You know what I mean? I mean? They don't even have to go that much below market to make a gain on it. Uh, there no. is 
rendering of a 3D printed community. Um, of course, these houses can look like anything, but the, this rendering in particular has uh, flat top roofs uh, with uh, looks like solar panels on them. Yeah, everything's very modern, very 50s looking. Well, 50s here in California. Uh, but then there are some kind of that's kind of cool style homes that have it's basically a box on the bottom and then it uh, I'm trying to explain this for audio listeners it's like a, a box on the bottom yeah it goes up like a traditional barn on top of it it looks like a box with a barn built on top now yeah. the barn built on top is not 3D printed but the box that's the that's the bottom floor and foundation is all 3D printed and then they have steel beams running through it too yeah and right now. Uh steel is less than wood right yeah so well it depends but yeah it's still it's still it hasn't gone up as much as wood it's gone up 30 percent where wood and lumber has gone up 200 percent. 200 percent. yeah uh there's a quote we're going to be graduating from homes by the dozen to homes by the hundred that's the ceo of icon yeah, and I so think this, they're going to get going quickly. I think it's they're going to yeah. figure this out and just start going crazy. I, I really do. Quickest path from imagination to built options. Uh, and by the way, great question uh, from Debbie. So uh, Debbie Rice Miller, I love the 3D concept, but I'm not sure how the mortgage industry will feel about it. So what is the, w will they lend on this? You know, and I, then what, what would be their hesitations? Like, why wouldn't they? It's still a solid, is it, is it built to code is the question, I guess, right? Yeah, it's concrete built home. So you, I would assume so. Yeah, if I, if I built a, not 3D printed, built a traditionally, concrete home put up the walls and everything in concrete the mortgage industry would lend on that right yeah and this kind of goes back to the building consumer confidence too mike elizabeth rodell said uh, four to six offers that i had on my house were from folks that were planning on building because they can't find what they're looking for but also i have two buyers this month that are sitting down with builders to start the process which normally i'm able just to get them to buy something existing there's just nothing existing so they would rather yeah. build and then be unhappy with the house yeah. Yeah. There's some people that are rushing into the house saying, Hey, we can make this what we want. There's other people uh, that say we need something built. And so for all those who want something built, the problem they're running into is the more expensive material cost and land cost. So the 3d printed houses may be a viable option to take care of all that. Um, <laughs> Christina Smallhorn shows she's always lurking and, and stalking. Yeah. I'm kind of with her on her next comment. The, uh, not cheap. Yeah, that, that's not cheap. Four hundred thousand dollars is not cheap, but it, you are paying for a lot of the space. I wonder if that's still cheaper than what they would cost, how how if they would have used traditional materials. So I wonder if they're still going below a traditional market house, right? In order for people to be tantalized by this new three D printed home, you know. Uh, <laughs> Matthew Clinton, producer Matt said, "Slap a Tesla solar roof on top, and I'm sold." He's all things Tesla. Yeah, those are coming down in price too. Alternative resources. So that's my question is what what price do they need to price things at where and are people going to go for it? Like do, does it have to be 10% below market value to jump on these homes and then are they going to be interesting enough? You know, like you can if you're buying a, an existing home or a, a resale home, you can buy a you know, a Victorian, you can buy a um, you know, modern, you can buy it, geez, one of 10, 15, 20 different styles, especially if you're around Ray, they have, you know, a lot of our newer stuff here in Southern California since the eighties is all kind of the same brown box over and over again. But when you get the seventies and sixties and older, you get very, very interesting and oftentimes one-off homes. So I'd be really curious to see if they're doing anything different than, cause this is technically new construction, right? It's just a new way yeah. to do new construction. So new construction around me, is oftentimes it's very small lots and the homes are very close together and they're all the same. There's three different models that are just flipped back and forth. And then one has a Victorian front on it. One has a craftsman front on it. And that's kind of it. It's kind of boring, but um, I'm curious, is it just going to be another version of that or is it going to be interesting enough to people for people to actually jump into this and be like, dude, I'm in, I'm buying a 3d printed house, put it, put some Tesla panels on the top and I'm buying one. I'm in. I brought, um, I'm bringing some people up from Clubhouse because I want their opinion. Number one, awesome. would they buy it and would they sell it to their people, uh, to your clients? Uh, I want to get to Mike Elizabeth Rodell. She said that will city ordinances prevent any of these? Little Rock ban tiny homes. Will cities hate them? You, why do you ban tiny homes? 
Yeah, yeah there, was a, there was a movement for tiny homes and people were trying to build them in these uh, places with gentrification and they said, nope. Huh. Uh, so this is not new. Sears used to make prepackaged homes. Well, they're pre, but they're not 3D printed. That lowers the cost even further, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I want to get to Antonio. Man, tell us, uh, tell us who you are, where you work, and tell us what you think of these 3D printed homes. Have you seen them in your market? Oh, wait, wait, I have to bring him up. So County, Connecticut. Um, I have not seen any of these in my home, in, in my market. Um, I'm curious to see one. I don't know if I would live in one or <laughs> if anybody around here would, but curious to see one, though. Is there, is there, and I was half listening, so I'm sorry if I missed this. Is there a price point to where these are being built? Well, that's, that's a great question. So last week we talked about one of the price points being around 300,000 and they said it was still 40% cheaper than a similarly built home. And uh, that was, I think the first one that hit the market last month. Uh, this, these homes that are in, I believe it was San Antonio. Did it, was it San Antonio? It's in Texas, either San Antonio yep. or Austin. It's all the same to me as an Arkansan. Uh, they, I think they are <laughs> priced around 400,000. So it's not a, not a cheap house by any stretch of the imagination. I think they are making them pretty bougie. Um, is, yeah, what is but, your average market price, Antonio? So in most towns around here, our average is about 500,000. But, you know, in the next town over, it shoots up to a million to a million five. So we're, we're kind of all over the place. <laughs> So I, I'm betting in your area because I think if I'm not mistaken, I think San Antonio's average is somewhere around three to four. So um, I bet in your area it would be like seven, six to seven thousand, hundred thousand. Um, interesting. So I, I'm wondering. Um, I would like to get your opinion too, Lance. Uh, you are a CEO, and I know you're an active investor. Would you be looking to invest in some of these types of 3D printed home companies or construction companies? Do you have anything going in that realm? Uh, we don't have anything invested, but yeah, nice to see you, Ray. My name's Lance Keston. I'm the CEO of Realty.com, and I am an investor also. What, just um, Ray? I'm located, I split my time between Boca Raton and Houston, and I haven't seen any 3D homes in the Boca Raton or the Houston market yet, but I am looking to buy um, a small ranch, and I would actually consider putting a 3D printed home on it. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to start shopping for your ranch in Arkansas, my friend. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you, your website lists homes for sale and such like that. Have you had any 3d printed homes that you're aware of hit the market on y'all's site? And have you seen any kind of traffic around that? Not that I've seen on the site itself, because we have millions of listings on the site for the whole country. So it'd be too hard to kind of find it unless we really start looking for the keywords 3d in the database. Um, but we are speaking to um, a builder right now that does 3D printed subdivisions um, and we've been ki and kind of module stuff. And he's thinking about coming to Texas and so we might do a partnership with him um, on the website. So that actually could be a couple months down the road. That's awesome. Well, as you as you explore that avenue, we'd love to hear more about it and maybe even interview y'all because that's that's pretty fun and exciting. And I also want to go to Carly. She's another native Arkansan. She's in northwest Arkansas. You don't have any of these up there, do you? No, we don't. This is the first I'm hearing of them, and they're super interesting. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised Wait, where's her if accent? Um, a certain big family of Bentonville uh, wanted to put them in uh, near downtown in the future, though. I could totally see that happening. Yeah, <laughs> you're not far off. Okay, so, uh, you know, Centerton, that used to be a place that had a, a bunch of small spec homes that's now just exploded. Uh, with building in Northwest Arkansas, and it's totally different than it was. You know, I was there in two thousand seven, eight, nine, and it has totally changed. So I'm wondering if these these three D printed homes may be great for areas like Centerton that was almost like rural development. It was a lot of uh, small, like you know, uh, fifteen hundred to uh, two thousand five hundred square foot single family, three bedroom, two bath uh, backyard, zero point one eight acres of a yard. And if you did subdivisions like this in an undeveloped area, like Lance was saying, in a ranch area that was just on the outskirts of town, I wonder if you could get RD loans for it. <clears throat> and if the build quality would be a little bit better than some of what we're seeing uh, for new construction RD loans. And if that would help pull the city out into to those areas like it did in, in Centerton. So 
If you want to comment on that, just flash your mic and I'll, I'll come to you. If you're in clubhouse and you want to add your two cents, just raise the hand and we'll pull you up. But uh, as we're talking about these, I'm thinking about what, what, what is the actual, uh, how do I say this? What is the actual need for a product like this? And what is the actual, like, will consumers buy these? Cause if you're, if you're, so let's just say it's the one where they, they 3d print the box down on, I'm trying to explain it for the audio listeners, the, the they 3d print a box downstairs and then, and the box is your kitchen, living room, maybe a couple of bedrooms and, and garage, but then they have to build on the second floor that downstairs is like, it's all concrete. Right. So, and it's not smooth. So what, how, where am I hanging my family pictures? Huh? Like, so do you know I'll, what I'm saying? Like it's anything like the Gablock. Um, which they, they have theirs out of wood and there's this insulation material in the middle, but they have to go back and put a thin layer for the wall. And that's where they run the wires and all that stuff through. Yeah. Like, do they come back and, and yeah. do like well, on the, the, on that picture that we saw it had in the 3d print, it had plugs and stuff coming out. So that is that's a great different question. than like, you know, if I want to, you know, 18 crosses in, in a certain configuration on my wall, how am I doing that? Yeah. Maybe they have special hangers that work with the 3D printed material. <laughs> yeah, the, the the 3M, those 3M sticky hangers. It's just I'm just thinking kind of logistically, like they're cool, but are they all going to be super modern looking? Because I don't know. I mean, unless you're in specific markets, people don't always want super marketing or super modern. They want kind of cozy. Yeah, you know they they don't want that. You know, because I've shown some super duper modern houses that are. I mean, they are cool. They are dialed. They are picturesque. But living there would be like living in, yeah. you know, a concrete cell. <laughs> but they're cool looking. Yeah, Matt, my producer Matt said the home comes with a concrete drill. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that's gonna be there. You know, instead of free pizza with purchase, you get a free concrete drill. Well, it's real easy to you know to you don't have to really paint and spackle or anything. You just put some concrete in the hole. <laughs> yeah, done. I mean that's a great point. But you got to drill. You got to get those those uh, what are they called? Those uh, setting bolts where they they open as you screw them in it's a whole thing that you can't just hammer in a nail and hang a picture anymore this is good okay so let's get to the let's get to the tipping point article so as real estate agents and as an industry one of the comments in in the headlines of this article is that we have reached some kind of tipping point the question is what is that oh wait ryan Ryan Kavanaugh, he says, uh, would also wonder how the ability to modify these over the years, they may just be stuck that way forever. That's a good point. Like you can't join a gains a wall. <laughs> well, and a concrete wall. Well, I mean, I guess you could put shiplap over it, I guess. Yeah, sh shiplap that wall, but you couldn't remove it completely because it's probably all structural. Well, all and, and printed. so to, to Ryan's point, think about like, if there's a wall there that kind of closes off the kitchen, if it's wood, I just rip down the wall if it's not structural and boom, open kitchen concept. How do you knock down a bunch of concrete? Cause it's all structural, right? Yeah. Uh, Melissa Mars says, I need to know how the heating system works. <laughs> oh, weather don't exactly mix. Yeah. I had a, I had a, well, that may be why they're building in Texas and California, right? I had a concrete guy tell me that concrete does two things in its life. It gets cold and it yeah. cracks. And you definitely would not want to crack going through your wall and then try to convince the buyer, just like we do on our, our concrete floors. Oh, it's totally normal. Stuff out of concrete, you know, it has cracks in concrete floors. That's totally normal to yeah. have it going all the way through our wall. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that's, I mean, wood bends and, and tweaks with, you yeah. know, the movement, especially here in California, where you have lots of earthquakes, even little ones. It all moves with that stuff. Will a concrete 3D printed home do that? Matt Clayton said, I, uh, producer Matt, I'd assume in production they'd have a layer of drywall. Probably, maybe. We'll see. I haven't seen a finished finished product. Probably, yet. maybe. Dusty Martin says, yeah, they look cold, hard, and uncomfortable to me. I always find it hilarious when I hear architects say things like, I wanted to create something that pushes the bounds of design and do something <laughs> no one has ever done before. <laughs> Two years later, behold, my square right. concrete box. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they can get uh, too cute by half is, I think, the Southern term. There you go. Mario with a great point, a very realtor saying, the crack on the wall gives it character. <laughs> I can totally hear a realtor say that. That's yeah. the bitch patina of a 3D printed home. It's yeah. the crack on the wall. <laughs> that, that makes this home unique. There's no other house with cracks like this in the walls. Oh, my gosh. 